السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته ردوان الله family welcome back to another episode of ردوان الله TV show um, I'm your host and maximizer motivator or whatever you like to call me Hussein Mahmoud working to help you gain closeness to and the pleasure of and bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this dunya through every single area of your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, in the weekly Ridwanullah TV show that I'm hoping to do, bidhnillah ta'ala, that I'm working on, bidhnillah ta'ala. Um, it's a little bit more longer form content um, where I'll be experimenting and expressing myself. Um, and I know in the beginning it, it started off, you know, so many different ways. But as of right now, I'm trying to make it like a formal show. Um, you know, where the motivations I'm standing up uh, during the show, it's more of a sit down, you know what I mean? More calmer, more in depth and things like that. Be the nilahi ta'ala. Um, so that's the difference between all the other content that I'm doing. Um, and I think just the way things are going right now, inshallah, if things doesn't change, um, I'll be posting it every Tuesday, be the nilahi ta'ala, um, around 6 a.m., unless I'm on my quarterly Radwanullah retreats. Uh, that I'm looking forward to hosting you guys, um, you know, different price points. There's the beginner package and so forth and so on. But, um, you know, and hopefully I can get some sponsors for this uh, show um, that I could, you know, ta'ala tell you guys um, how to join that. Or, you know, if, if, if you're a sponsor and or an advertiser um, and you'd like to sponsor and or advertise this channel, um, there's multiple ways you could do it. You could do it through Patreon. Um, I'll, inshallah, I'll think I'll have the link below. Um, or you can just email me directly at ridwanullahorganization at gmail.com. So what is this show going to be about? A lot of it is going to be about dealing with um, constructive feedback and or destructive feedback um, and building your dream business and life and more, bidhanillahi ta'ala. So that's what this episode is going to be about and the show is going to be about, bidhanillahi ta'ala. And I'm really, really excited to dive the, into this uh, because a lot of it is based on, you know, the individuals that I personally and professionally work with um, and deal with on a regular basis and from my own personal journey to gaining closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the bliss and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through every single area of my life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace will and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, and I'm trying to look a little bit more present, presentful, presentable. <laughs> All right. So I'm trying to, trying to do that, bidhanillahi ta'ala. Um, and you guys will get to know my real personalities through these videos because, you know, a lot of different individuals probably are like, how come you're not like this in real life? Uh, many reasons. Um, the people who know me like this in real life know exactly what I'm talking about. And if you're not one of those individuals who know me like this in real life, um, it is because something that we have to work through. ta'ala. Um, so, you know, obviously you got to have a table for a show and a nice background. Uh, inshallah, hopefully we'll get to a studio that says Ridwanullah TV show in the back. And then we'll be able to kind of do a lot of amazing things. Um, you know, in the beginning, I'll kind of go solo and I'll bring individuals to interview Bidhanillahi Ta'ala on this show. Um, as you guys have seen in the past, um, you know, a lot of them are very, very successful. A lot of them are um, kind of successful. <laughs> uh, but at the end of the day, we'll get through that Bidhanillahi Ta'ala. <clears throat> Um, and I don't know what the format will be, um, you know, I'll figure it out as I go along, bidhanillahi ta'ala. You know, maybe it's good to do some um, announcements, uh, uh, updates, and yeah, announcements and updates. I don't have much right now, but if I do, I'll be sure to let you know, bidhanillahi ta'ala. Um, but inshallah, uh, you know, as of right now, um, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how far this will go or how deep or wide this will go. Uh, but I'm doing the Ridwanullah TV show on Tuesdays and then coming out with the motivation on Thursdays for um, your deen and the rest of your life. And then the motivation for your freedom and wealth on Sundays, bidhanillahi ta'ala. Um, so I'm just, you know, trying to experiment and try to figure out how I can consistently post um, those particular days, bidhanillahi ta'ala, so you guys could, 
uh, find some consistency in my work and the things that I do, Bethany Light Tyler. And there's a lot more amazing things to come. So I don't want you to miss any of that. So press subscribe and join the notification bell and press the notification bell uh, to join our Radwanullah family. And if you're liking this so far, press the like button. Leave your comments below on what you think. And if you have anybody to share this with, share this with your family and friends, Bithani Lai Ta'ala. I would genuinely appreciate it. Hopefully they'll benefit and you'll get Sadaqatul Jariya Bithani Lai Ta'ala. So, um, yeah, let's get into it. Um, there's, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're building anything and you're doing something meaningful in your life or with your life or for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, um, it's, an, it's an ongoing battle. You're going through this journey and you're experiencing so many different things in life and you're thinking about so many th different things and you want to do so many different things and you just don't know how to get started. Um, and in the beginning, you know, nobody's paying attention, right? And you're just going about just, you know, dibbling and dabbling and you know what I mean? Like you try one thing and they're shutting you down. You try another thing and they're shutting you down again. Um, they, whoever they is. Um, and you're just kind of going through that battle and you're like, man, like this is not supposed to be this hard. And then you gain a little bit of strength to get off the dogma and you're, you know what I mean? Like you're doing your thing. Um, not living under dogma and trying to do, please anybody else except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if anybody's pleased with what you're doing for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then those are the good people. Um, and if anybody's not pleased with what you're doing to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as long as it's within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that's all you need to do. That's all you need to focus on, bidhanillahi ta'ala. But throughout your journey, you're going to have some lovers and some haters. I'm break it to you straight up like that. Um, in the beginning, all you're going to see is some haters because not only are you facing hate from internally, you're facing hate externally as well. Um, the self-sabotage and, you know what I mean, the doubt and the confusion and the loss and, you know what I mean, like you're not even certain on what you're doing yet and everybody and their mom has got um, different opinions on what you should be doing and what you need to do and want to do and all of this stuff. And it's just, it's just sometimes it gets overwhelming and you know what I mean? You still have to do this and that and that and this and this, so many different things. And within that capacity, you really have to think about all the constructive feedback that you're getting, both positive and negative, both verbal and nonverbal, both um, actionable and inactionable, whatever you want to call it. There's so many different ways that you could think about it. And I think I did uh, um, a video on this before where you're going to have to think about um, uh, you know, how you're going to deal with this. And for me personally, I've come up with a strategy on how to deal with these types of uh, different individuals and what they're doing and what they're saying to you. Um, you know, the first thing is, um, obviously, you don't know their exact intention, but you can sense it, right? You can sense it. Um, and if it's a good intention, you can sense good from them then it's okay. So you categorize individuals based on what you sense from them and not to judge them on that based on that being reality, but just on what you sense. You have to have senses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us these senses. So the first thing is, do you sense it coming from a good place or a bad place? If it's coming from a good place, that's a good thing you should move forward. So that's one category of them. If, it's, if you sense that it's coming from a bad place, and it could change at any moment, so you're not holding them accountable to that, but it, it's just what you're sensing from them, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. And if you sense it coming from a negative place, a grudge or resentment, whatever else it may be, that's another category. Now, the question comes, they give you the constructive feedback, whether that's love or hate, right? Or good or bad or in between. And then you categorize it as this. Number one, is it useful for me right now? That's the first question that I ask myself. Is it useful for me right now and where I'm at and what I'm doing? If the answer becomes yes, you, and it's all good, you take what's good from it and you use it to the best of your ability and you ask yourself, is this thing going to get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and will it allow me to achieve the bliss and the pleasure, the, the pleasure and bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any area of my life? If, it's the, if the answer is yes, then you use it to the best of your ability and you move forward. Um, if the answer is some, you take some and you move forward and you dump the other one. If the answer is no, what you do is, 
you ask yourself, is this going to benefit me in the future? If what you're telling yourself is maybe it's a potential or yes, it will help me, you shelve this constructive feedback, whether it's destructive or constructive. And you shelve it for a moment, put it on a case, and you leave it on the shelf until you, whenever you need and or want it, you go back to it and revisit that, whether that's internally or externally. And then you say, okay, is it going to be something that's very beneficial to me, even in in the future? And if it's yes, you, you know, if, you're, if, if, if a year passes by and you're, let's say a week passes by and you're still not using it, you should keep it there, not a problem. If a month passes by and you're still not using it, you should think about starting to get rid of it, but you don't really get rid of it. You leave it in the shelf. And let's say um, a, a quarter passes by, three months passes by, and you're still not doing anything with it. This is maybe the time when you're thinking, okay, maybe I should just dump this in the trash. Or, you know, use it to the best of your ability. If it gets to a point where a year passed by and it's still on the shelf, guaranteed what you should do is chuck it. That's the third and final thing that you should do with any constructive feedback. Just throw it in the garbage. If it's not of any value, of any use to you in your life and gaining closeness to and the pleasure and bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in any area of your life, you should... Just let it be and continue on that be even in ta'ala. So that's what, how I normally will deal with constructive feedback. And some of them are so hard because they're so good and you don't know the parts that you should use and you don't know the parts that um, you should take. And a lot of people are telling me, you know, stop this and do that and don't do this and don't do that. And it seems like they, they have the most brilliant of ideas for me when I'm trying to do something with my life and when I was down and out and nothing was happening they don't have any constructive feedback you know what I mean it's like it just doesn't make sense right if you genuinely truly care about me why only give me constructive feedback when I'm trying to do something with my life but when I'm not trying to do something with my life you're not telling me anything and I'm not trying to blame anybody but for those individuals who are trying to derail people um, you know just Figure out, figure out what you should do with your life. Figure out how you can improve your life. Figure out how you could purify your heart and soul and mind for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And always give, the, you know what I mean? Like a feedback is feedback. You know what I mean? Like I feel like there's always love in some feedback even if it comes out negative or even if it seems like it's coming from a negative place to the individual who's receiving it. Um, and, you know, vice versa. And everybody's going through their own go-throughs and ex experiencing their own experiences. And it's going to be an ongoing battle, an ongoing journey. So deal with constructive feedback like that. Um, and alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen, that's to the best of my ability how I'm dealing with the constructive feedback. And you know what I mean? Like it's, it's the exact same way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know what I mean? Like wants us to do it. And it's the exact same way that um, our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did it, right? It's the natural way. You know what I mean? Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whenever anybody gave him some constructive, constructive feedback, like that's pretty much how he went about, right? If it was good, he took the good out of it. If it was not good, he left it at that, right? And kind of moved forward in that manner, bidhanillahi ta'ala. And that's how I try to do and live my life in terms of constructive feedback um, internally and externally. And I hope that you're doing the same. You know what I mean? Like don't let negative experiences or constructive feedbacks or destructive feedbacks uh, you know, knock you out, you know what I mean? Like get back up, shrug it off and you know what I mean? Forgive and live the rest of your life for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's how I would personally advise you, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. If I could get a little bit of water, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, just give me a moment. Bismillah. Bismillah ar -Rahman. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Okay. <clears throat> you know, when, when, when something is your passion, your purpose and dreams, you tend to go, you, you tend to give as much energy and effort as possible and you're so focused. Um, and that kind of takes a lot of energy. And, um, you know, rehydrating is important for me. Um, and I'm trying to get into some sort of smoothies or juices that uh, will revitalize my uh, heart and soul, mind and body, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. 
Um, so I can continue to do that and I can sense, you know what I mean, the energy dropping. But at the same time, we're going to keep it at the highest level as possible within the capacity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So um, the, just to kind of let you know, the duration of these, uh, these shows um, could be anywhere from, you know, a couple of minutes. Like any, I would say anywhere from 30 minutes to an hour, maybe even way more than that. Um, it just really depends on what the situation entails and what it really needs and, and or wants. Uh, so as of right now, since I'm doing something solo, uh, maybe I'll finish it up in, an, in 30 minutes to an hour. Uh, maybe it goes longer depending on the situation, uh, but I appreciate you guys sticking with me and, and learning something beneficial that, you know, I'm trying to just share the value and the wealth um, as well as the use of whatever knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with so it could be of some sort of value for you. Um, and don't let anybody make you feel like and or think that you don't have anything useful or valuable to say or because you don't have something you can't say and or do something. To me, that's just uh, something that needs a little bit of adjustment, to say the least. Uh, because, you know, it, it, benefit does not come in any language, does not come in any shape or form. As long as it's, fr it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and through the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's beneficial. And we should take as much value and use from it as possible, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala. So, the, the part of building your dream business and life you know, obviously when you're building some sort of business and or investment and you're working full time and you're trying to hustle and grind um, to gain some sort of freedom and wealth, um, you're going to go through a lot of constructive feedback internally and externally. And a, lot, and a lot of people are going to tell you what you should do and shouldn't do and could do and can't do and everything in between. Um, and it's going to be one of those things where um, you know, you just have to slowly but surely build, right? You know, I have so many entrepreneurial and investing friends, uh, Islamic, non-Islamic, um, and they're struggling and striving for what they're doing. And I can see the stress in some of their faces as I'm meeting with a lot of them, uh, uh, that I've been meeting with a lot of them lately. Um, you know, individuals within Salt Lake City, Utah, individuals outside of Salt Lake City, Utah, individuals outside of the country, um, from my from my own country, Somalia and Middle East and all of the just everywhere across the world, Europe. Um, and, you know, I'm just experiencing and seeing individuals who don't know what to do, who including myself, like we're so caught up in not knowing what to do. And and, you know, when you're not doing something, when you're not taking action, as I mentioned, a lot of people have nothing to say. But the moment you start doing something Everybody and their mamas wants you to do this and that. So you really have to figure out the type of business that you want and what you really want to do and how you want to do it. Um, and experiment, right? You're not going to get it right the first time or the second time or the third time. Um, and, you know, anything that's worthwhile or anything that has any sort of value and that could give you the most value and it's exactly what you want is not a short-term gimmick or short-term gain. It's going to be something that's going to be long-term. You're going to have to set your vision everlasting in the akhirah and then set your vision for the dunya and then set your vision for this world, for this year. That's how I plan it. That's my three-point um, goals and dreams system for achieving any level of success in business and or life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace will and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the first question that I always ask myself is, what, what is the everlasting vision, the akhirah vision that I have for myself and how do I want to accomplish and achieve that? And then what is the goal that I want to achieve while I still live in this dunya for the entirety of my dunya? Um, as long as I'm living. And then what is what are the goals that I want to achieve this year? And then I kind of go through that. And you guys could probably see uh, through the monthly goals report, um, you know, how I'm progressing through these goals in the different areas of my life, um, whether that's, you know, Dean in life or the other one is business and uh, freedom and wealth, which has all of these different elements. Uh, so once I look at these three different elements in these three different strategies, I really want to think, um, you know, is this something that I genuinely want that, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that, that will get me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure and the bliss of 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I truly love? Or is this something that my parents or siblings or family and friends and everybody else want me to do um, that doesn't really sit well with me or doesn't fit well with me? And is this something that they're exemplifying through, right? Um, and if it's something that they are, then, you know, I kind of m measure and manage through all of these different elements on how to be able to do that, right? Um, and I was sitting with one of my close friends and we were talking about the different aspects of, you know, just kind of building, you know, uh, a blissful and successful life uh, personally and professionally through our dean and life and, you know, freedom and wealth through businesses and investments and things like that. And one of the things that we came up with is there's a lot of inner struggle and inner conflicts where, you know, we want to be able to just crush everything and do everything and get things done. Within the same token, uh, we feel the, the, the greed and the, uh, the, the, the negative ambition and the desire that's boiling inside of us that's keeping us from feeling bliss and successful. But at the same time, we don't want to let go of what we have in our hands that we're building. Um, and that's why it's so hard to build something right the right way by experimenting on the right thing. Even though you're not making money in the beginning, it'll come in the back end. Um, and it's like, if you let go of this, what are you going to hold on to? Mediocrity, laziness, doing nothing with your life, not, you know what I mean, uh, trying something new. And it, that, that, that doesn't feel right either. Holding on to n things that you're not passionate about, that's not your purpose and dreams, doesn't feel right. And let, holding on to nothing doesn't feel right. So what is the balance between the two? The balance between the two is that we should hold on to what we're most passionate about, that is our purpose, and that is our dreams, that is utmost pleasing, that will gain us closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and utmost pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So that's the essence of what it is and what it's going to be if you're trying to build anything with your life. Um, you know, anything that's worthwhile takes 80 to 90% of energy and effort, day in and day out, with very minimal, nothing to minimal returns on investment. And, but as you go along, you're dr delivering so much value and benefit to so many individuals for free. Eventually, they'll start seeing that you're delivering so much value and they'll start purchasing whatever little that you have for sale that they could benefit from even more. Um, you know, not that they need and or want to, but maybe they need or want to. It just depends on your particular situation. Um, and, you know, you just kind of go from there. But what are the individuals are doing? They're giving, you know, 10 percent to 20 percent value in the, you know, and they're trying to get extract for free. And they're trying to extract 80 to 90 percent value and making money from it. I hope that's making sense. It's making sense in my head um, just to kind of get back to the bigger picture. There's individuals who are doing, who are, who, who are engaged in business and they're miserably engaged in business where they are giving 10 to 20 percent for free and about or maybe even 100 and 100 uh, percent or zero or negative for free. And they're expecting 130 percent um, sales and revenue and, you know what I mean, profit. And that does not work like that. Um, you know, maybe let's say. They're at best, they're giving 10 to 20 percent free value and they're getting uh, they want or need 80 to 90 percent value. And those are the individuals who get very minimum value, minimal value in terms of sales and profits. Uh, but the individuals who are pure, with the purest of intentions and utmost sincerity, giving 80 to 90 percent of their value and use for free for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and about. 10 to 20 percent of the stuff they're selling, those are the individuals that will get the most value, that will get the most benefit from anything that they're doing. So not to say that you really have to exhaust your energy and effort do, just doing stuff for free. But if you don't know what your business model is or what your, mo what your business is really about or anything else like that, you really have to give, just give free value, free value, free value, and charge for certain things, and see the fruits of that labor from that, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. But a lot of the individuals are thinking that I thought for myself that, you know, I have some valuable stuff. 
I have amazing stuff. I have so much value. Why isn't people, why aren't people buying it? Why aren't people purchasing my programs? Why aren't people doing this? Why, 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 why? It is because, yes, I have intrinsic value. Yes, I have this value and that value. But it is not marketable value. It's not commercialized value. And you're not branding, in, you know what I mean? You're not marketing and selling the proper way. You're not visible. You're, most people don't even know about it. Most people don't even know what you have, how good it is. They're, they haven't had enough samples to say, yes, I'll visit this. I, I, I really love what this brother's doing or whatever this brother's selling, whether it's physical product or not physical product or the combination of the two, right? So it's important for us to really think about that, bi ta'ala. I, I lean in with meaning because I realize how truthful that is for me and all the entrepreneurs that are out there. And they're thinking, my idea is so amazing, right? Yes, it could be. But you really have to ex exemplify that through a lot of focus, a lot of money and a lot of time and a lot of energy and effort to prove that value beyond words. And then... Whatever capacity that you can charge for what you have and go from there, bi'idhni Allahi ta'ala. But if your idea is so valuable, how come people are not benefiting from it, right? Like for me, I thought when I started speaking that my speaking engagements should be 3,000, 5,000, 10,000 plus. But I really haven't spoken a lot and, you know what I mean, given, um, you know, the proper value to people. So I don't charge as much. Right. As of right now, to the capacity that I do it. So, you know, if anybody's out there looking for a great speaker, you know, a hungry, motivational speaker that's in the early stages of his career, humbly requesting to be speaking to your organizations or you would like me to speak at your organizations and investments and whatever it may be. I would love to be there. Be the ta'ala. So send your request to Ridwanullah organization at Gmail dot com. Be the ta'ala. So that's how it is. And you just got to deliver so much value up front. And wh whoever sees the other value and they can see, you know, the live and in-person value aside from the online content that you're creating and they're benefiting from, um, then that's what it is, right? You just got to keep plugging away, keep doing it. And your life will be shaped in some, some, something amazing, right? When you're just focused on delivering so much value and disconnecting from all the negative individuals and connecting to all of the positive individuals, whether it's in business or the other areas of your life, it's going to be something very, very valuable for all of us, bi ta'ala. So that's really what it is and what it's going to be, bi ta'ala. I hope that you're benefiting from what Ridwanullah TV show is becoming. Um, you know, I'm just learning and growing. Like in the beginning, there's a lot of people that rejected me, um, that they didn't want to be on the TV show. And I didn't take that personally. You know what I mean? They're not, you know, used to the, I, It took a long time for me to get used to the camera and, um, you know, just become comfortable, let alone effective and efficient. But at the end of the day, you have to start somewhere. You have to get somewhere. And I thought, like, I got to figure out what my creativity is and my processes and these concepts and ideas and just keep doing stuff so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be able to, you know, put some barakah in it and start with the purest of intentions and utmost sincerity. Um, so I'm just going to do the solo show and then have some guests that, that, could, uh, that, that have something amazing, that are doing something amazing within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there are some Islamic individuals and content creators that I like what they're doing, um, I, I, the, the good part of it. And, but at the same, and they're very you know, young, but they're not doing it within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I feel like it's a disservice from me to put them on my platform uh, because I don't want to promote the negative stuff that they're doing, even though it's not perceived to be negative by the majority. Uh, but for me, you know, if it, as long as if something is within the boundaries, rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I'll move forward with it. If it's not, I'll not. Um, and a lot of the individuals that I want to do the interviews with that are keeping it halal and within the boundaries, rules and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, are, are, are not in Utah. And if you are in Utah and you would like for me to interview you on, this, on my Radwanullah TV show, please let me know. I'll be happy to connect with you. Um, and if I'm traveling to different states and things like that, um, I'll be connecting with my brothers, the content creators, the creatives, uh, to be able to just interview them and individuals who are not content creators and creatives that have something valuable to say. I'll be interviewing them as well, bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, entrepreneurs, investors, community leaders, and um, you know what I mean? Like 
scholars, imams, and you know, so many different individuals that we could benefit from bi ta'ala. So, <laughs> I keep laughing like that because uh, I remember one of my friends a long time ago, he actually moved out of Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, he kept making those laughs and it just kind of stuck with me for some reason. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much what it'll be. Uh, probably creating a fool out of myself. You know, you got to live life, right? You can't be living in a box. Uh, other people might think one way of you or another. Let your, you let your character and manners roam freely within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I'll say <laughs> as much as I want. That didn't go so well. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much it. I hope you're smiling and having a good time as much as I am. Um, you know, I'm really trying to entertain you guys halal in a halal way. I'm trying to educate you guys in a halal way and hopefully allow you to execute on your goals and dreams within the boundaries, rules, and regulations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, I have a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, the announcements and, announcements and updates that I have coming up is um, I'm looking forward to starting Ridwanullah uh, University, which is a monthly membership program to help you uh, gain closeness to and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh. Um, and, and, and gain the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every single area of your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I mean, it took me a very, very long time uh, to kind of think about it, to, to, to kind of work through it. Um, and I really thought, should I start online, offline, um, or both? Um, but right now I'm kind of leaning more towards the online platform where it's going to be a monthly membership between $15 to $30 or around that range. Um, so you can learn about this and, and, and help yourself, help me, help you uh, take your life to the next level. So I'm going to be working, that, working on that in the back end. Um, if anybody's interested on the previews or would like to be one of the first ones to be joining the program, uh, send your email to RidwanullahOrganization at gmail.com um, and Bidhanillah Ta'ala I'll let you guys know on some ex exclusive insights on that program Bidhanillah Ta'ala um, and I'll see if I could be doing that offline as well uh, but I'm going to be focused on uh, doing the online part it's a, it's a you know a pro an ongoing program where it's going to be focused on delivering value uh, on a monthly basis um, you know delivering a lesson and a course on a monthly basis Bidhanillah Ta'ala with live Q and answer question and answers about anything that you have going on in your life and you know what I mean, which is going to be the training, the Q&A, you know, the coaching, consulting part of it as well, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. And I'm really trying to build an online community that can connect online as well as offline, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. Um, and, you know, I hope that you guys could join us. Um, it's going to be something very, very beneficial, something useful, um, something that I'm hoping to leave a legacy with, uh, ta'ala, and extreme value for our ummah, ta'ala. Um, those are the announcements and updates that I can think about. Um, and I can't really think about anything else. Uh, my challenge to you is to think about how you're dealing with your constructive feedback and write that down. Are you dealing with it in a negative way or positive way or somewhere in between and you're making the transition between the two? Um, or you just, you know what I mean? Like it's stopping you from building your dream life, your dream business and life. And it's an ongoing battle for all of us, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. So think about that. Um, you know, I'm actually out and about right now um, around Salt Lake City, Utah. Um, you know, I'm, sometimes I do these uh, shows and motivations um, at my house. Um, sometimes I do it elsewhere, like right now I'm, I'm chilling somewhere, I can't really let you know where it is, uh, but it's at a, at a, at a school uh, or college, whatever you want to call it. Maybe the colors will give it away for those who know about it. Uh, but yeah, that's where it is, that's where it's going to be, bi-idhanillahi ta'ala. Um, Jazakumullah khair, I truly, truly appreciate your love and support. It really, really means a lot to me. You know, before I was so focused on all the other subscribers that I'm getting and trying to get. Um, but I really want to appreciate those individuals who are subscribed, who are watching the content, who are supporting the channel, who are, you know what I mean, like giving me constructive feedback, 
who are giving me positive and positive energy and constructive feedback. And even though the, those individuals who are giving me negative energy, I get a lot of individuals who are giving me negative energy as well. And I really appreciate them as well because I feel like any energy is good, even positive and negative. Um, so I genuinely appreciate that. Um, I really, really appreciate the 30 or so subscribers on my Radwanullah TV show, uh, TV channel, as well as the 200 plus uh, subscribers on my personal channel, the Hussein Mahmoud channel, um, or you know any other location that you might be watching this or seeing this. Jazakumullah uh, khair from the bottom of my heart. I really, really appreciate you guys sticking out uh, through this journey and seeing me develop and grow and going through a lot of things, personal, professional, positive and negative, and you guys see me hustling and grinding throughout this whole, per this whole process. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Um, and I'm just coming from a good place right now, whether people see it as that or not. Um, you know what I mean? It's not up to me. It's up to them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you know, all I'm, all I'm responsible for is being as purely intentioned and not most sincere to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and others as possible. Um, and, you know, that's just what it is. Um, and I genuinely appreciate uh, the Radwanullah family who continuously stick by me, who continuously see everything that I'm doing. And I feel like I don't want to let you guys down. Sometimes it gets a little stressful that um, I don't want to just stay on the same level of life doing the same things. I want to be able to slowly but surely get to the next level of my life. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's a catch-22 where sometimes I'm not, uh, I might not be doing it with the right intention and sincerity. And sometimes I might be holding myself back from doing that because I don't think I'm doing it with the right intention and sincerity. But I feel like if I don't improve uh, my dean in life, and if I don't improve my business, uh, my freedom and wealth, you know, my business and investments, and if I don't gain closeness to and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through every single area of my life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, well, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I feel like to a certain degree I'm letting you guys down. So I cannot be hypocritical in what I'm doing and what I want to do. I have to be purely intentioned and utmost sincere. Um, according to whatever capacity that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me. Uh, whether people take that out of context or not, um, whether they realize it now or later, you know, that's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so I'll leave it at that. But I'm really, really struggling and striving to, um, you know, do the best that I possibly can um, to the capacity that I possibly can and being an example and a model uh, to, to get to the next level in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace will and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I, I say all of that just to say, um, you know, one of the most important things to me is being purely intentioned and utmost sincere for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, you know, for the things that I do wrong now or in the future, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive me. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. And please make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me and for you as well. Um, and, you know, I see a lot of individuals who get into doing something amazing with their life. In the beginning, they're so humble and, 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 and grateful. In the future, they get so egotistical and ungrateful. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect me from that. Um, you know, and I hope that I continue to be as humble as possible, to continue to be as grateful as possible and loving um, as convic convic with the most conviction um, and the most pure desire um, and the most gratitude and love uh, for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and humility. Um, I really, really appreciate you guys sticking through. Uh, the lights are kind of going off, so I got to wave air now and then wave ah come on man all right i know you guys can see me okay at least um so that's it jazakumullahu khair jazakumullahu khair jazakumullahu khair uh oh i heard some noise i don't know what it is maybe it's just some other stuff but anyway um jazakumullahu khair Radwanullah family for tuning in to another episode of Radwanullah TV, your source to gain closeness to and the pleasure and bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through every single area of your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm your host and maximizer, 
Radwanullah Maximizer, Hussein Mahmoud, checking out by saying, never ever give up on gaining closeness to and the pleasure and bliss of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through every single area of your life in this dunya and in the akhirah by the grace, will, and for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.